and still make uh, actually a, a bit more profit on the on the cruise. And it is just like Sunset Cruises, it sells out well in advance. So the result is much higher ridership and of course then a better profitability uh, for the service. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it, honestly this this you see a, a reduction in ferry service at, at an average $6 price point, and then you see a huge climb in ridership at a $20 price point. So it, it was a good uh, trade-off. It was a, an excellent idea, one that we all didn't buy off on at the beginning, but we're now sold on it. Uh, thanks to Joe, it's, it's been very successful. We're very happy about that. The other specialty cruises that we've had so far this year, we did two Mother's Day dessert cruises. And we did a Father's Day cruise, Mother's Day dessert cruise. Uh, both of those offerings sold out completely, as it uh, did very nearly the Father's Day cruise. So those were two successful events as well. Year-to-date charters are down only slightly from prior years. Uh, we're at 30 charters for the year. We normally are at about 32 this time of year. Um, Future bookings look like they're going to be a little bit stronger. Weather is certainly better. Weather in the first half of the year was uh, yeah, pretty rainy and had an impact on our charter bookings. You can see in April it was a pretty wet month and contributed to that. As well. Canceled trips. Canceled trips are higher this year due to weather conditions. They create large amounts of debris in the locks and in the river. Public Works does an excellent job removing debris. As he said, it was 30 tons just this past month. However, the large amounts of rainfall and the number of rainy days we've had make it challenging to clear enough debris for the ferry to operate safely in the basins and in the locks. Year to date, we've canceled 133 trips. Last year, we had only canceled 60. Marketing this year on social media has been expanded to more posts with directed marketing on specific events. The response has been very positive, and we're looking at a, at a very good year this year. And with that, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Any questions? Any motion to receive that update? So moved. Cast your vote. It passes. Thank you, Jeannie. Item E is to receive a presentation on public and grant funded improvements to the Oklahoma River Cruisers facilities and the River Park equestrian area. Who's going to start this presentation? I believe Jeannie is going to start the presentation and she's going to be followed by Don Douglas and then by Eric Winger. As you know, CATVA has been awarded a grant for improvements to the ferry boat system on the Oklahoma River. I'd like to share with you the details of the grant, and with the assistance of Triad Design Group and Public Works, we'll out, uh, outline the details of the projects as well as other improvements along the river. The Passenger Ferry Grant Program is managed by the Federal Transit Administration, and it is part of Section 5307 funding. Typically, 5307 funds are distributed to transit agencies through a formula based on system size and ridership. The former ferry boat discretionary fund was added to this section in December of 2015. So it used to be a separate thing altogether, and now it's Congress put it in with 5307, which is very confusing for transit agencies since 5307 is typically a formula and this little piece is discretionary. It must be applied for. It's part of the FAST Act for Fixing America's Surface Transportation, or the FAST Act. The grant is allocated by Congress $30 million a year, and it's awarded every two years. In 2018, $58.2 million were awarded to 20 projects in 12 states, COPPA being one of those. COPPA received a total of $1. $1,190,560 for five projects. The grant had to be scalable. We had to break it into pieces so that if they did not have sufficient funds, they could cut a project 
and maybe only award four of the five. As it was, they awarded us all five projects. <clears throat> As you can see, the, the criteria is there on the screen. <clears throat> the funding is restricted to capital projects and cannot be used for operations or for maintenance. They must support the existing service. They can establish new service. They can make repairs or modernize the vessels and related facilities. A 20% local match is required, and it is a reimbursable grant, which means that first we spend the money, and then they reimburse us afterwards. <clears throat> this is a breakdown of the projects, their total cost, the local match, and the federal share. <clears throat> the first two projects are for security at the main terminal at Exchange Avenue, where the boats are maintained and moored. I think I've mentioned before, last year we had four thefts on our vessels where people were able to get onto the vessels and fortunately all they stole was the alcohol, so we were, we were not impacted too terribly on that. The three larger projects are being facilitated by Triad Design Group and Public Works. The timeline for completion of the projects is shown here. One of the criteria for selection by FTA was the timeliness of completion of the projects. It is anticipated that all projects will be complete in time for start of the 2019 season. The security cameras for the maintenance building and vessels are anticipated to be installed no later than November of this year. We are already receiving bids on those projects. A camera on the front of the maintenance building will give us a visualization of the parking lot. Our other cameras give us visual of the back of the maintenance building where the fuel storage tank is and the three vessels along the dock. <clears throat> we also need to replace our archiver, which is, has gotten uh, to be somewhat unreliable in being able to store the data for us. Cameras on the vessels are important. Um, all of you, I'm sure, have been on the vessels. And the camera is in a cabin and can't, is in the wheelhouse and cannot see what's going on in the cabin. So if there's some sort of activity with a deckhand that he needs to know about, this will help him be able to see what's going on back there. Provide some more security for, uh, for the passengers and for the deckhand. And with that, I'll turn it over to Don Douglas. Thank you, Jenny. Jenny's kind of went, went through the process of the grant. I'm going to go briefly through the design developments that you will see coming for the trust as we develop the design. Improvements to the terminal includes washed out areas where you can see under the walk, some erosion that we have along the banks. So we will go in and, and repair that so that we don't lose the ramp and we stop the erosion on the bank itself. No one gave me instructions about how to run this thing. Uh, which one, Jeannie? Uh. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry about that, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Mars, straighten up. Good thing you're a better engineer than you are an AV guy, you know? I know. <laughs> it went past me a long time ago. <laughs> Okay, I think the next slide is going to talk about, not that one. <laughs> That's why Tiana doesn't let me run anything at home. <laughs> the next is the new pavilion that we're going to provide at the Meridian Landing. This landing goes back in the pavilion for about five or six years that we've all talked about it. And the location will go where the tent is now. Then these are a couple of the drawings that we will see in concept of what we will bring to the trust itself on the finished product. Just another side view of what we're looking at. The next slide will be the proposed landing uh, for what we call for a long time the stockyards landing, which has been in the updated report for that we did about transportation along the river. And it will be a 10 by 60 landing it will be recessed so that it's not in the river itself, and that's what this shows. We will also provide lighting and um, canopies and landscaping around it so that people, when they come, 
uh, to wait for it or get off and come back, we'll have a place to stand and wait. And so the next slide, is Walter, what Eric's going to go through is the improvements that the city's already started putting in. Thank you, Don. Um, my name is Eric Quing. I'm the Public Works Director for Oklahoma City, and there's a few key projects that we're assisting in, and so it's two departments that are actually involved. We've got the Utilities Department, which is the work that's covered on this slide, and then I'll show you some work that the Public Works Department is going to be doing next. There's really two features that you'll see on this slide. It's providing water and sewer service to the Horse Park site. Um, at the bottom street that you see there on the drawing is Agnew. You might recognize the Stockyard City identification signage there in the lower right and, of course, the bridge going over the river. The two uh, lines that you can see in blue are those water line extensions. And so as improvements are made to the River Horse Park area, there is going to be water service available. And that work has been completed. The yellow lines identify um, sanitary sewer service. Um, and those also extend onto the site to provide that future sewer service should structures or other facilities be built. Because of the elevation, a lift station is required. So today, all of the subsurface work is done. The lift station is being completed. Um, and so those final items are being done on both the water and the sewer for readying everything for next year. Next slide. This slide is going to show a couple of key features. And so what we're looking at now is parking improvements. Um, again, same orientation with, with Agnew on the bottom. The area that you see that's highlighted in either the red or the, the dark pink color is an existing parking lot um, that's going to be resurfaced. And that's something that we're able to do with a lot of our public works in-house crews. Um, there's going to be some modifications to the drive that comes off of Agnew um, so that we can make sure that we're addressing fifth wheel and horse type trailers to get them down into this site. Um, but you can expect that in the next few months we will start those, those projects or at least the project on the area that's in red and dark pink. Um, as its initial phase one. What you see in blue extending east of the road is that phase two project. We are going to be working very closely with Don Douglas and Triad Design to work on the design for that, but that is a project that we're also going to be doing here in the near future. It's a project that Public Works won't complete in-house, but one we'll probably be using some unit price or bid contracting. And then the final and future phase would be that extension even further to the east, which is identified in green. So obviously enhancing the existing parking lot and services to get them ready for the new year, um, doing a phase two expansion, but then that phase three is going to be a future phase. It's not included um, with any resources. It's going to be subject to available funding, um, which we'll start to seek. But with that, that will wrap up kind of some of the utility and infrastructure projects that are underway. And again, maintaining those goals and those timelines that uh, Jeannie explained earlier in the grant. Again, I think any of us can answer any questions you might have about the program. Any questions? Okay, thanks, Eric. Thank Rhonda, would you like to make some comments? Thank you, Mr. Chair, trustees. I'm Rhonda Hooper with Jordan Advertising, and I'm here today representing Cal. I'm not the head cow, I'm just one of the cows, and that is the Committee of the Willing. So it's really not a, a negative thing. Eric, Don, Thank you for everything you're doing. It's amazing. And Jeannie, thank you for your unbridled spirit and dedication to making the stockyards landing a reality. You really have focused on it, and it's going to happen. So thank you very much. Um, I tell you, the infrastructure improvements that are currently underway at the River, Oklahoma River Horse Park truly help us identify projects and things that can happen going forward and help to make this a growing destination. Um, momentum truly does enable us to address the number one question that we've had from the private side. Is the city really committed to this? And if so, show me, at which point then we will show you. So hopefully show you is the good thing. Um, in fact, Doug Cooper and I had a meeting uh, just a few weeks ago with uh, the developer of the surrounding track of the American Indian Cultural Center. And they, are, they were extremely excited about what we were planning. In fact, together they, we see the synergies that can happen. And we would allow the, the horse activities to literally be the conduit, the connector uh, of recreational, cultural, and uh, educational opportunities 
on both sides of the equation, Stockyard City, American Indian Cultural Center. So we're in that process right now of figuring out the possibilities. So I appreciate very much the leadership of the Parks Department, Doug and his team. Um, they have been amazing to help identify. In fact, subgroup of the cow will be meeting with them to determine what are we gonna need for the horse troughs, uh, corrals, other facilities going forward and the possibilities and envisioning what the livery stable could possibly be. So we're gonna be meeting with Stockyard City people as well. So there is discussion, there is opportunity. And I cannot go without saying, I really appreciate Marsha Herod, the municipal um, officers, the municipal department for really getting focused. David, thank you for, David Birch for keeping us on track, identifying what, our, what we need to do and how we streamline in order to be able to have activities at this park. But more news to come and thank you very much for your support. Any questions you might have? Just a comment, Rhonda, and I thank you for all the work that you guys have put into this. It's been years uh, that we've been talking about this, but I think six, six years. Yes. <laughs> I had a lot of gray hair. <laughs> I, I think that you know the point you made um, of the cities stepping up is so important, and you know I think the value of what's being invested here today is roughly three million dollars if you combine the grant and the the um, other work that's being done by Public Works, and so. We really hope that that is the springboard for some private match to those dollars. And then as we, you know, we've discussed as we go forward, you know, there continues to be an opportunity for this public-private partnership. But we're really excited about the private side uh, joining us uh, at this point to see what the next steps are. Absolutely. I tell you, it has really made people dream of what this tourist destination will be. It will be the most unique of its kind in the country. Well, and the conversation, again, thank you for bridging that conversation, because the discussion of what could happen from stockyards down to the Native American Cultural Facility is incredibly exciting. And um, you bet. we appreciate and, you being part of that. And the programming needs to complement with an E, not compete with each other. So that's why it's important for us to all understand what we are trying to accomplish. So. But thank you very much. Appreciate that remark, Meg. Miss Trustee, I should say. Miss City Councilwoman, all your, anything else? Okay, well, thank you very, very much. Thank you, Rhonda. I need a motion to receive this presentation. <laughs> Second. Cast your vote. It passes unanimously. Item F is an amended memorandum of understanding amongst the city, Oklahoma City Riverfront Redevelopment Authority, the City of Oklahoma City, and Oklahoma River Horse Experiences, Inc. for future development and operation. Uh, we have an MOU that we did some time ago, and this uh, simply amends that MOU. Doug, you want to cover what it changes or adds? Well, one, one of the big things that, that I wanted to remark on, if I might, Mr. Chairman, Doug Copper, Director of Parks and Recreation, for the record, uh, this, this goes hand in hand with what Ms. Hopper said w about the partnership and, and making events occur down there. This allows the uh, cow group to actually hold events down there. They don't necessarily have to pull the city permits if you agree with this MOU change. Coordination, obviously, we don't want to book other activities on the river trail system if we're going to have a, an equestrian activity at that location. So. But this, this kind of smooths the way for them to do multiple events a year as fundraisers or awareness or educational opportunities uh, to get donors involved and, and see what the possibilities can be. So I, I'd be happy to answer any other questions, but this, this is the next step in the agreement uh, to make the horse park a reality. Yeah, and even though they don't have to get the permit, they still have to go through the, the uh, city meeting uh, correct. They, they still have to get the insurance and put a plan together for parking and, and things along those lines, but, but uh, it, it cuts out some of the uh, red tape that would uh, normally others would be required to go through to get an event on, par on your property on the riverbank. Any, any questions for Doug? Did I get a motion? Okay. Uh, cast your vote. And it passes unanimously. Thank you, Doug. Good luck. Happy trails.
whatever you say in, in the cow world. <laughs> Okay, item G, an assignment and assumption of lease agreement amongst the City of Oklahoma City, the Oklahoma City Riverfront Redevelopment Authority, Wheeler District LLC, formerly known as Humphrey Partners LLC, for a soccer league administered by the Latin and American Soccer League of Oklahoma, Inc., on a property that we recently acquired. Doug, you want to explain what's going on here? Thank you again, Mr. Chairman. Doug Cupper, Parks and Recreation Director. Uh, part of the agreement with the uh, Humphreys Group for the exchange of land, uh, we, we acquired uh, approximately 30 some odd acres uh, set off from the river bank that had an established soccer program going on that even before the Humphreys acquired that real estate, the soccer program was occurring there. They assumed the uh, lease agreement with the soccer organization. Uh, so what we are doing with this action, if you agree to it, is assuming that lease to, uh, for the uh, soccer organization to continue playing soccer on that real estate. Uh, again, it's an opportunity to continue programming uh, for that area of town that uh, needs that, those soccer assets available to them. Uh, they do the majority of their own maintenance, so there is not a higher cost to the trust or to the parks department for maintaining the, the area. Be happy to answer any questions. I assume this is consistent or close to other leases you've done for sports facilities on the property? That is correct. Uh, uh, what we're doing right now is we're not changing anything. We're just assuming what the, what the uh, program was that the Humphreys had with them. And we will open dialogues with them to make sure that they understand what we need and we understand what they need so we can keep things rocking and rolling. How many fields are there and they have room for expansion in the future? There, there's no room for expansion. There's uh, two uh, pump jacks on the real estate that we acquired. Um, it's pretty well maxed out uh, the way it is um, for their uses. Any other questions? Okay. Need a motion on this? Second. Cast your vote. It passes unanimously. Item H is a request from the Oklahoma City Community Foundation to name an approximately 3.5 mile section of the North Oklahoma River Trail from Portland to Harvey, the Oklahoma City Community Foundation River Trail in recognition of the Oklahoma City Community Foundation's commitment under an MOU that we did in March of this year to partner with the Riverfront Authority and the city to provide extensive landscape and hardscape enhancements to the surrounding river corridor property. Before we start, um, there is a typo change on the cover letter for this. Instead of 100 trees, it's 1,000 trees. We don't need to amend this, do we? So just wanted to make, make sure that people knew we were getting a whole lot of trees. So, anybody have any questions? This is, uh, we'll introduce it today and set for final action on August 28th as per our naming uh, procedures. Need a motion? Cast your vote. It passes unanimously. Item I is to recommend that the Oklahoma City Council approve a revocable permit for Scissor Tail Community Development for the 2018 Fiestas Patrias, September 16th using portions of Wiley Pose Park, the Matt Hoffman Action Sports Park, and Manuel Perez Park. Again, Doug Cupper, Director of Parks and Recreation for the record. Uh, this is a partnership with a, with a nonprofit organization. It's similar to the Cinco de Mayo uh, activities that we had in Manuel Perez back around May 5th, obviously, of this year. Uh, we think this is a golden opportunity to continue the diversity uh, of our programming. It gives us an opportunity to partner with an established uh, Latino organization, and, and it's, it's a good, uh, good way to celebrate uh, the uh, freedom from Napoleon, basically, of those countries uh, south of our current borders um, a few years back. So be happy to answer any questions. but. But uh, the, the partnership does benefit the River Trust because proceeds do go to the, the River Trust coffers. Cast your vote. 
It passes unanimously. Item J is to recommend that the Oklahoma City Council approve a revocable permit with the Royal Society LLC for the 2018 Royal Society Social, September 2nd, using Regatta Park Plaza. Who can tell me what the Royal Society Social is or does? Sorry, I ask. <laughs> Uh, my, own, my only curiosity is if you look at the in the agenda item for the the, the thing that the pe the attendees have to sign, it looks like it's a, a fairly uh, physical thing. I don't well, know. It doesn't really say what 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 it's all about. I mean, what, okay. What's the purpose of this um, function, <clears throat> Mr. Cupper? Do you have any idea? <laughs> Well, you know, I, I'm sorry, but I'm at a loss on this one. I didn't do my uh, homework on this particular one. Uh, it is using the majority of Regatta Park for their activities. Um, obviously, there are uh, rowings and things along those lines going on for this activity. But uh, if you'd like, I can bring back a report at your next meeting and tell you what it was uh, if you uh, feel uh, um, the appropriate nature is to approve the special event. Uh, I will definitely have a report for you at next month's meeting. <laughs> Sometimes you regret asking. So. Uh, I need a we'll get motion on this. City council meeting. <laughs> Did I get a motion? Yeah. Cast your vote. Passes unanimous. claims, do we? I don't see any. Item 6 is claimed and I don't believe we have any this month. Item 7 is additional items. Any comments from staff? Doug, you have anything other than your uh, director's report? I promise not to put you on the spot again. <laughs> okay. Any questions for Doug on that? Any comments by trustees? Any citizens wishing to be heard, we are adjourned.